Hi guys, today we are continuing the story, A Shady Plot by L.Z. Brown. It is a ghost story and we are going to hear it in stages. It is found in English Literature, textbook in English for Grade 10 CBSE. Let's roll! Uh, nothing, I said and looked around for the ghost. Suppose she had lingered and upon hearing what my wife had said should suddenly appear. Like all sensitive women, Lavinia was subject to hysterics. But you look so funny. I, I always do when I'm interested. I gulped. But don't you think that was a foolish thing to buy? Foolish? Oh, John, foolish! And after me getting it for you! For me? What do you mean? To help you write your stories. Why, for instance, Suppose you wanted to write an historical novel. You wouldn't have to wear your eyes out over those musty old books in the library. All you'd have to do would be to get out your orja and talk to Napoleon or William the Conqueror or Helen of Troy. Uh, well, maybe not Helen. Anyhow, you'd have the, all the local color you'd need and without a speck of trouble. And think how easy writing your short stories will be now. But, Lavinia, you surely don't believe in Oja boards? I don't know, John. They are awfully thrilling. She had seated herself on the arm of my chair and was looking dreamily across the room. I started and turned around. There was nothing there. And I sank back with relief. So far, so good. Oh, certainly. They're thrilling, all right. That's just it. They're a darn sight too thrilling. They are positively devilish. Now, Lavinia, you have plenty of sense, and I want you to get rid of that thing just as soon as you can. Take it back and get something else. My wife crossed her knees and stared at me through narrowed lids. John Hallock, she said distinctly, I don't propose to do anything of the kind. In the first place, they won't exchange things bought at a bargain sale, and in the second, if you aren't interested in the other world, I am. So there. And she slid down and walked from the room before I could think of a single thing to say. She walked very huffily. Well, it was like that all the rest of the evening. Just as soon as I mentioned Ojabods, I felt things begin to cloud up. So I decided to let it go for the present, in the hope that she might be more reasonable later. After supper, I had another try at the writing, but as my mind continued to be a perfect blank, I gave it up and went off to bed. The next day was Saturday, and it being near the end of the month, and a particularly busy day, I left home early without seeing Lavinia. Understand, I haven't quite reached the point where I can give my whole time to writing, and being bookkeeper for a lumber company does help with the grocery bills and pay for Lavinia's fancy shopping. Friday had been a half holiday and of course when I got back the work was piled up pretty high. So high in fact that ghosts and stories and everything else vanished in a perfect tangle of figures. When I got off the streetcar that evening my mind was still churning. I remember now that I noticed even from the corner how brightly the house was illuminated. But at that time, that didn't mean anything to me. I recall as I went up the steps and opened the door, I murmured, nine times nine is eighty-one. And then Gladolia met me in the hall. Mr. Hallock, the missus, she thinks you're lost. She says she done phone you this morning to be home early, but for the Lord's sake, not to stop to argify now but get ready for the company and come on down. Some memory of a message given to me by one of the clerks filtered back through my brain, but I had been hunting three lost receipts at the time and had completely forgotten it. Company? I said stupidly. What company? The Mrs. Oja board party, said Gladolia, and rolling her eyes, she disappeared in the direction of the kitchen. I must have gone upstairs and dressed and come down again, for I presently found myself 
standing in the dimly lighted lower hall, wearing my second best suit and a fresh shirt and collar, but I have no recollections of the process. There was a great chattering coming from our little parlour, and I went over to the half-open door and peered through. And ta-da! Time is up. We will be continuing this story in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video for receiving more of this story and others. Goodbye!